Welcome to Biology Made Easy. So what do we have for today's lesson? Today we are looking at the system of classification, binomial nomenclature, and a little history about classification of organisms. These are the objectives. Well, there's a term called taxonomy. Taxonomy is simply the science of classification. So what about classification itself? The word classification is the grouping of things or organisms where similar organisms or similar things are put into the same group. Simply, that is classification. Now, classification of organisms was traditionally based on the structure of the organism, just the structure. The structure meaning the morphology, the outside, and then anatomy inside, traditionally. But now classification is based on the sequences of bases in DNA, where genetic material, that is DNA sequences, are similar then the organisms are put together closer into groups. For instance, man has chromosome number 46. Our closest relatives, the chimpanzees, have chromosome number 48. So we are put in groups very close to each other. So let's talk about the importance of classification of organisms. You know that organisms are so many, many diverse organisms. We can't study each one of them. So when the organisms are put into groups, groups based on their structure and basis in DNA sequencing, then those organisms in the group have similar characteristics. So when you pick any organism that belongs to a group, you know that this organism has these characteristics. All right? That is one of the importance of classification. Now, you know, organisms are put together into groups, not only based on their structure, but sequences of bases in DNA. And the organisms are put together based on long ago relationships. So, importance of classification also enables us to see evolutionary links among organisms. These organisms are together because they had a common ancestor, all right? Their common ancestor had the same structure. Let me give you an example. All animals are put into one big group just because all animals have cells that do not have chlorophyll and all plants are put into the same group because plants have chlorophyll and then they have cell wall or cellulose all right so based on what an ancestor had it makes identification easy it makes identification orderly and it enables us to identify evolutionary links or relationships among organisms, okay? Now, let us look at how organisms are put into groups. And there's a term called systematics. Systematics is the science of placing organisms into groups, okay? Group is also known as taxa. So organisms are put into a hierarchy of groups. So let's look at hierarchy of organisms. Well, here is a hierarchy of taxa of organisms. You have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Kingdom.
all the organisms on earth are here and all the organisms are put into five large kingdoms you remember the organisms are put into a kingdom based on their structure and also the fact that they belong to some long ago ancestor they had a common ancestor so in a kingdom the organisms have just only general characteristics in common so we have this you see these organisms look at their shape so they are all in this kingdom these ones are circles so they are all in this kingdom this one look at their shape in this kingdom this one too all right their shape in this kingdom now when we pick one kingdom for instance we are picking this kingdom all right we bring it here when you look critically into this kingdom that they all have this shape but some are very 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 tiny some are big some are slender some have some kind of curves around them so there are differences so the kingdom is subdivided into phyla one is phylum sometimes division is used when a plants are being referred to so this kingdom we have this this group is different so this becomes one phylum this is also different this become another phylum and these ones are different so they also become another phylum so you see we have one two three phyla in this kingdom because they, those there, there are some differences so these are closer so organisms in a phylum are more similar than organisms in a kingdom you see organisms in a phylum are more similar then we pick this phylum and look at it very well so we brought it here when we paid close attention to this phylum we realized that there are differences here these ones are different there's kind of a square inside them so this becomes one class organisms in a class have more similar characteristics than the organisms in the phylum this is also another class and this is also another class so we have class a phylum is divided into classes and the organisms in the class are more similar than the organism in the phylum then you pick one class so this is one class so this one has circles in them so we pick the class with the circles and we looked at them very well and realized that the class of this there are some organisms that are more similar these ones have some yellow round things in them so they forms one order we are subdividing the class into order right so this is also another order here they are different then these ones are another order they are very very different they have red inside them you see so a class is subdivided into orders and organisms in the order are more similar than those in the class then we pick this order and we see that this order of the organisms these ones have one inside the circle so this if you look at this order there are differences and the orders are broken subdivided into families so i have one family here then i have another family here this one is also different so this also becomes another family then i pick this family if you look at this family you will see you can subdivide it into genus or genera because some have dots in them blue dots and some don't have blue dots so we can subdivide this into genus one genus is here another genus is here those that have the blue dots form one genus those that have, don't have the blue dots form one genus and then when we look at those that form so we divided them and the genus we can divide this genus also into others because so they have blue dots but some have three dots some have only two dots so the, those who have three dots will become one species they are together another those who have two dots will become another group another species so that is how you can group organisms into kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Therefore, every organism you see belongs to a kingdom, 
phylum, a class, and other family genus species. That's how it's done. Fishy. Good. Now, so let's look at human beings. Human beings belong to the kingdom Animalia, phylum Caudata, class Mammalia, order primate, family Hominy, genus Homo, species Sapien. And in this Animalia, human beings belong to the kingdom Animalia. Then it comes here. You have um, class Mammalia. This class Mammalia that human beings are in. There are others also there, all right? There are other mammals, like goats, cats. They are all there, class. But as we go, we are separating, all right? And finally, everybody becomes one species. Good. Now, we want to look at how organisms are named. Scientists name organisms, binomial nomenclature. For instance, man is known as what? Homo sapien. The Homo comes from its genus name, and the sapien comes from its species name. So how did man get this name? Right, so as we said, the binomial nomenclature is the naming of organisms. Binomial means two parts. Nomenclature means naming, all right? So the two-part name is a Latin name, all right? So the two-part Latin name given to organisms comes from the genus and the species names. So when scientists are naming organisms, they pick the name of the genus and the name of the species. For instance, Man has a common name, man. The scientific name, Homo sapiens. Look at the classification. Kingdom that man belongs to is Animalia. Phylum that man belongs to is Caudata. Class that man belongs to is Mammalia. Order that man belongs to is Primate. Family in which man is, is Hominidae. Genus Homo species sapien. So the scientific name which is based on the genus and species names of organisms, so scientific name of man is Homo sapiens. Alright, so there are scientific names of other organisms that you have as you can see. There are conventions of writing scientific names. When a scientific name is written, the genus is written first. So you see man, the common name is man. The genus is homo, it's written first. And the species name is written second, sapien. That's how it's written. Then another thing to note is that the genus always starts with a capital letter, but the species with a small letter. And then another thing to note after you have done that, you either have to underline each of the names separately. Write the names in italics. Otherwise, it needs to be underlined. These are how scientific names are written and where scientific names come from. Right from the kingdom. Good. So you can work out the importance of scientific names, isn't it? That is an assignment. Now quickly, we want to round off this system of classification by looking at some scientists who did a lot of input into classifying organisms. Aristotle, look at the time Aristotle lived, a Greek philosopher and biologist. He based his classification on the appearance and size of plants and animals. You see, whether you have red blood or not, plants, whether you are big, shrub or tree. So, then came John Ray. Look at the time he lived. A British naturalist, he introduced the concept of species. 
So if you are talking about species, it was introduced by John Ray in 16, who lived between 1627 and 1705. Then Carolus Linus, he used the idea introduced by John Ray, and he developed the scientific naming of organisms, also known as binomial nomenclature. Then Carl Wolsey in 1978 introduced the three domains of life and six kingdoms of organism scheme. And other scientists like Whitaker proposed the five kingdoms of organism scheme. Well, we've had a good day, isn't it? Let's get our tiny assignment for today. Today, you need to suggest the importance of scientific name. That is all. I hope this lesson has been very beneficial. So we we'll meet in our next lesson to look at what Carl Wolsey introduced, the three domains of life, and then go on to look at the five kingdoms of organisms, and then look at the first kingdom we want to work on, we want to look at the prototists. So till we meet in our next lesson, goodbye.